<laughs> so hello everyone uh welcome to the call i'd like to thank you guys and thank you melissa for that introduction um uh, i appreciate you know all the accolades that i get uh, and don't think that I, I i take it you know with pride i don't uh you know i've, I've worked hard to get to this point blood sweat and tears uh, i had to make some sacrifice uh, lost life up under my hands. Um, I've lost people in the past, you know, just just trying to get them to where they, they wanted to be. And it wasn't because of me that I lost them. It was because that they they just waited till it was too late. Um, I always believe that as long as you have breath in your body, you can turn things around. But I also realize now it's not just about just having breath in your body. You have to have the will. You have to have strong faith. Not everyone has this, the same type of faith. You have different types of faith. You have strong faith. You have perfect faith. Some people have wavering faith, you know, and so it depends on where your faith level is, which which will get you through it, because I've, I've experienced a, a lot of healing that, that has taken place in people's lives um, that was miraculous, some even spontaneous. Some may have taken a long time and some they just couldn't they just couldn't make that turnaround. And so um, I learned to just uh, do the best that I can um, where I'm at with what we have and, and just let you know, the spirit of our, our father move us uh, in, in the direction that we both desire to go uh, when it comes to healing the body. So what I'm gonna talk about, of course, is uh, you know, the, pro the program. Uh, if, you have any, if you do have any questions, you can kind of write them and we do have a couple of questions before we get started, if you don't mind. Um, I, don't, I know you were hmm. getting on, so you might have not heard Erica's question. Um, yeah. We'll start with that. Okay, sure. Um, so I actually probably need a question again. You want, okay, no you problem. Want to yeah, so her daughter is starting the phase um, two, the seven day cleanse with her this week. And she's got a fruit allergy, so she typically has to cook her fruit. fruit. Um, and she doesn't know the exact name of that fruit allergy. But um, it's a certain condition that is, I guess, is pretty known in the medical community where you're allergic to fruit and has to be cooked. So, um, Eric, if there's anything else I'm missing, you can. It's, a lot of it is um, uh, fruit that has stones in it because she, if she's allergic to the tree, she's allergic to the fruit. So that's, that's what I remember about it. But I also think because she's also allergic to things like carrots, I think. So, Ayana, if you hear, you can also chime in. Can you guys hear me? Okay, there she is. Hi. Hey. Um, hey, so how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Um, it's actually the fruits, some fruits and as well as some vegetables, like um, to give you an example, eating raw apples, for example, uh, will activate an itching sensation um, in the back of my throat that will sometimes spread to my ears and things of that nature. Same thing for like bananas. Um, it's usually uh, fruits that aren't citrus fruits. Um, and then for vegetables, any raw vegetables like um, celery, or broccoli or carrots. Carrots is a big one. Um, if it's not at least steamed, then I have a, an allergic reaction to it. Exactly. And again, it's been since she was a kid. So we, we've been caught sometimes where, I think it was, um, what was it, cherries, John, when you, we actually almost had to run her to the emergency room because her face kind of blew up. You know, mm. and so I thought she was telling a lie until I started realizing that every time she ate something, I'm like, oh my God. So it was a real issue. So it's been a while though. She's 30 years old now. So, but it's been happening okay. since she was a kid. So what, what age did you actually recognize this? Um, I, th I used to get allergy testing on a regular basis when I was a kid. So I want to say we probably figured it out around like maybe seven or eight or something like that. And it's been going on since then. Got it. Got it. Um, okay, question. Uh, how, how was your diet back then and how is it now? Is it the same back then as it is now? Um, I would say it's a little different um, only because my parents' diet has changed from when I was little as well. Um, so as I've gotten older, my diet has changed along with theirs. Um, so it was when I was a really young, I was vegetarian for a long time. But then I started incorporating meats into my diet once I reached around that age, probably. Um, and then um, as I got older, I realized, like, I, I used to have, a, like, a nut allergy. I don't have that allergy anymore. So certain things have changed and others haven't. Mm, got you. 
when you were vegetarian, uh, what time frame of that in your life? Uh, I honestly don't remember. I know I was pretty young. I was probably like at least around like four or six or something like that, somewhere around that range. Four to six? Yeah. Four, four years of age? Yeah, something around that. Got it, got it. So, so, but you, when you, you were at some point when you were in your single digits consuming meat, is that? Yes. But you, 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 but you initially were consuming meat, um, of course, when you got teeth, and then you switched to being kind of a vegetarian. Am I correct? Yes. And then at what age right around did you let go of the vegetarianism and go back to the meat? I want to say probably when I was about seven or eight. Got you. Okay, so so here's the thing with with our body. So when you started off eating meat, you were actually probably in a better place. If you had continued eating meat and had never become a vegetarian, you wouldn't have this condition. Let me say that again. If you had continued eating meat and, would, and did not become a vegetarian, you would not have this condition. I know that sounds strange, but that's unfortunately, that's how the body works. Um, it's one of the situations where your condition after you've made the transition is worse to go back than it is before you made the transition. Does that make sense? Yes. And because you did this at such a young age, your body was developing certain, certain enzymes um, to, the, you know, to develop and break down a lot of these fruits and a lot of these vegetables. Uh, and so when you let go of meat at a young age, you close the door, but then you open that door back up. It's kind of like a friend of mine who had been vegetarian for years. And then all of a sudden she decided she wanted to, you know, eat meat um, and she developed Crohn's disease. Uh, but in her situation, she wind up letting go of the meat again. And she said, you know, I'm gonna go back to being vegetarian. And of course the Crohn's disease went away. But this was because she had been living as a vegetarian for such a long time, her body was now rejecting a lot of the animal proteins. Um, but in your situation as a child growing up between that age, a lot of children, uh, a lot of children don't, don't have that type of transition. My son uh, was never given meat. Uh, and I pray that he never decides somewhere down the line to do that because if he does, he's gonna have a lot of problems as well uh, when he starts eating meat. Um, but here's the thing, uh, a lot of times when people are dealing with different allergies, uh, and now let me ask you another question real quick. Uh, what is your blood type? Do you know your blood type? Yes, I'm O. Oh, okay. So all O really means is that uh, you have a little bit more stomach acid in your gut to break down the protein. Um, it doesn't mean that you're just a meat eater. You know, a lot of times we think, you know, even because the book says, well, it's blood type O, you got a lot of meats that you can eat blood type O can eat more meats than blood type A and blood type B and blood type AB. Well, that may have been the case once upon a time, but as life goes on, new information comes into the world. We have new discoveries and so that changes a lot of things. So now we're understanding that, yeah, man, man and woman weren't designed to be carnivores and herbivores. Uh, even though we have adapted to the ability to eat meat over time, that, doesn't, that still doesn't mean that meat is good for our system. It just means that we have adapted to that process. But here's the problem. Our adaptation, our adaptation to meat uh, has cost us something. We, had, you had, we, had to, we have to pay a price for that adaptation. Every adaptation, in that sense, out of our nature, let me say that again, adaptation out of our nature has a price and we have to pay that cost. The cost that we pay uh, consuming meat uh, is, our, is our lifespan. Lifespan shortens. And when the lifespan shortens, of course, that's because we're adapting to something that was not a part of our nature. So listen to this. So there's a level and a period of grace. There's a grace period. So we all understand what a grace period is. A grace period, like let's say, 
uh, with mortgages or, or a bill, there's a grace period, right, before you have to pay that bill. That means that you have incurred the cost, but now you have, to, you, you have a little bit of time before you have to pay it. So when we started eating meat, we were given a grace period. This is one of the reasons, I'm, I'm, it may seem like I'm getting a little bit off, but, but stay with me. It may seem like uh, we, we have a grace period, and when we step away, when once that grace period is up, then we still have that cost to pay. We have that cost to pay anyway, but during that grace period, everything is going well. So when we, when we started eating meat, uh, we created a grace period. Um, when you actually became vegetarian and, and you, start, you stepped away from meat for a little while, uh, you actually had started now to have to pay that cost um, because of the meat that you did eat. Now, you didn't accumulate a whole lot. Children don't. But what happens is your immune system, your immune system, once you became vegetarian, your immune system became more sensitive. It became more sensitive. And, and it's supposed to, because in a sense, when you became vegetarian, your body started to remove the meat out of your system. It started to remove the meat out of your system. And when it starts removing the meat out of your system, then now your body is closing that door to animal protein. It's opening the door to all these fruits and vegetables, uh, which had you continued, had you continued, of course, obviously, you know, it would have been a really cool thing. But, if, but you notice that when you, when you kind of told me about when all this started, it started right around the time, I guess, when you were switching back over to eating animal protein. You know, based upon what you're telling me from ages four to seven, and then say around seven, that's when you start noticing that you start having these allergies to consuming the fruits and the vegetables. Well, something is going on in your gut, uh, or something may have gone on in your gut back then that is causing uh, your body to start reacting to fruits and vegetables in a way, you know, your body is overreacting or hypercharged to it. One of the issues is that we deal with is leaky gut. Uh, I don't know if you ever heard of leaky gut, um, but leaky gut has to do with little holes that are in your gastrointestinal lining. Um, this can come from a, a corrosion based upon what we're eating. And so when you have these little bitty holes in our lining, this is one, one, one possibility. When you have holes in your lining, whatever you're eating or whatever you have been eating, even though you may not have been reacting first, these little parts these little food particles at the microscopic level are leaking. That's why I call it leaky gut, leaking from your intestinal tract where the food is being digested, the fruit and everything is being digested and it's, and it's leaking into your bloodstream. When it leaks into your bloodstream, now you're, you're in the realm of your immune system. See, what, what's not supposed to be in your bloodstream is gonna be flagged by your immune system. And you know what your immune system is going to do? It's going to treat it like an enemy. It's going to treat it like a foreign invader, even though it may be harmless, even though it may be a part of your blood type. And when that food leaks into your system, into your bloodstream, your body starts to create a memory of it. Why is it creating a memory? It's creating a memory no different than it when you get a vaccine. You, they're putting a vaccine in you so your body can create a memory of that antigen so it can create antibodies and a defense response to that the next time it shows up in your body. So now when food starts showing up in your body, even though it's harmless, even though it may be on your beneficial list, your immune system says that's an enemy once in the bloodstream. And it has already done the work to identify that food particle. So now what happens when you consume that food, you have a reaction to that food uh, it could be a swollen throat. Uh, it could be hives. It could be any type of immune system reaction um, because now your body has identified that as something foreign, not because it is and it's even harmful to your system, but because it has somehow gotten into that bloodstream and has been flagged as an enemy and the body is trying to protect you from it. So that's one aspect. Another one is um, enzymes. Enzymes in our body, our body uses enzymes for every reaction, thousands 
25,000 different reactions from three to 5,000 different types of enzymes in the body that they have discovered. And when, when, you, when, you have cert, when you don't have certain enzymes in the body, it actually causes uh, malfunction in certain areas. Uh, in your sense, it could, could be food enzymes. You know, the funny thing about it is that plants, uh, fruits, they have their own enzymes, which is why, you know, we want to eat more, which is why when you cook anything, especially fruits and vegetables, if fruits and vegetables were not designed to be cooked. Let me say that. Fruits and vegetables were not designed to be cooked. Now, I know we cook them. You know, we know them big pot of greens that be on the stove for hours uh, mm -hmm. around Thanksgiving or Christmas. Those greens are good. But so now they're in a the realm where now the cooked greens is going to cause more problems. Your body somehow can adapt to the cooked food. And the thing about it is that if you were doing that before you became a vegetarian, your body may be more adapted to the cooked food than the nutrition or the phytonutrients or the chemicals that's in the fruits and the vegetables. So there's a lot, there could be a few things going on and I'm not saying for sure what I know what it is, but one thing I do know is that what you, you noticed that you used to have what an, an allergy, an allergy, and then what happened? You said it went away. Your allergies can go away, but in order to do that, you're gonna have to first go through a process where you start to reboot, rebuild uh, your immune system, and actually reset it. We want to reset your immune system because right now it's not working in your favor for the things that you need in order to heal your body. So therefore, something's out of whack. We don't know what it is. We're, I'm just going out. We're just going off the information that you told us, and we're trying. I'm trying to help people to to troubleshoot a situation, because some things are not in textbooks. Some things are. You know, a lot of medical doctors don't have a lot of answers to underlying issues. They have treatment. They have maybe a remedy that may subside it, but they don't have a root cause, and they don't have a solution to it or to eradicate it. So what we tend to do is we have to troubleshoot it, figure out, okay, what do I need to do? So you, as, and as you start doing it, you may discover a better way of reversing or eradicating that condition than even a medical doctor or a scientist because it's your body and only you know what you've been doing over the past 30 years that could have triggered something like this. Nothing happens in your body for no reason. There's always a reason that it's happened. What I would need to see, one, is your scan. I would need to see your bio scan um, and maybe even some blood work uh, so that we can kind of figure out one, what's been going on in your body, and then also make a list of all the fruits or the vegetables that you are allergic to, quote unquote. And when you do the cleanse, you avoid those particular fruits and vegetables. Now, you're only avoiding them because you don't want any reactions during the cleanse. You want to get through the cleanse, but if there are certain fruits or vegetables that you can do, then guess what? Stay away from those, at least through the cleanse. Because what's going to probably happen is, as you continue to cleanse, one day, just like with the nut allergies, you're going to find out that, wait a minute, I used to be allergic to this. Now I'm not allergic anymore. I, I think Sharon can chime in on that too because she had also an issue where she was once allergic to something uh itchy skin and all that stuff and then later on find out that she didn't have the allergy anymore i've had a lot of experiences with people that used to have allergies to something wind up going through the detoxification process specific and it was a strict process for them some i had a nurse practitioner give me a whole list of things she was allergic to and we just had to customize the regimen specifically for that. So that's why as, a, as, a, as, the, as the head coach, or shall I say the master coach, my goal is to take the situations that people are dealing with because the coaches don't have the, the experience to really troubleshoot uh, technical issues, but maybe the general stuff. When you have a technical issue, my goal as a coach is to use that situation to teach and educate all the rest of the coaches 
on how to troubleshoot it so that we can customize a particular regimen in order to address that issue. So this wouldn't be something that, you know, just the, um, the flat belly regimen would do in order to correct it. We need to talk about how to use the products uh, with Wakana, additional products that I would uh, put together, and also a more specific regimen that really targets that issue uh, at the root level. And so that's something that we can, you know, discuss uh, off the line, but I just want to kind of give you an idea of, of, of what we have to do in order to make that happen, okay? And I was gonna say, yeah, let's connect you guys, but I have a question, Erica, um, mm -hmm. and um, it, one of the questions I have, one, Dr. Prince, as always, you're a thousand percent on point. Um, I was looking up one of the very credible sources that we use for certain, um, conditions and it was saying basically you know you're right you know your immune system is overreacting to something that it thinks is a threat um, and that's so poignant of you to say but one of the things it mentioned about stone fruits it said if you can handle them cooked most people that can handle them cooked can handle them in a juice form mm -hmm. do you know if you're allergic to the juice form of the stone fruits as well i actually don't know um i, I don't believe so but I, i'm not sure okay so I can't wait for you guys to get together, troubleshoot this, but as Dr. Prince says, we believe you're on your way to total body healing and restoration, where this will be the thing of the past. So, so thank you for bringing that question up. But, and Sharon, I don't know if there's any comments that you have too, because I know, as Dr. Prince said, you also have some allergies that you were able to overcome. So any comments from you, Sharon? I think I see you out there still. Did we lose your internet, Sharon? I think we might have lost their internet for a second. Yeah, I think their internet's frozen, guys. But you're not sure if you're you can handle the juice or not. Now, I wouldn't advise troubleshooting this on your own uh, because as I'm looking online, they're saying you really want to be in the hands of an expert in case you do have a reaction. You don't want to um, have that reaction to that juice. But um, in, in most cases, if you can handle it cooked, they're saying you should be able to handle the juice version. So we'll see. Okay. So should Dr. Prince, should we reach out to you later? Yeah, I would reach out to Dr. Prince. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Reach out to Dr. Prince and let's see what we can um, do to get this under control. Thank you. Yeah. Great question though. And so while we're waiting on their internet guys, let's see if there's any more questions in the chat so we can get them prepared for the next set of questions. Oh, Sheila Lewis. She says, hi, everybody. I'm new to this. Starting next week. You're sc Don't be scared, Sheila. Okay. As you can see, there's a big supportive network. Okay. So we are here for you. Join us every week. Is that you, Dr. Prince? Looks like you might be back. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. yeah the boot. Um, the, the devil is alive. <laughs> <laughs> always, you can't get always. So, so, but no, that's, that's, I want to say that that is that's a great point. So, Usually when a person uh, has that type of issue, first what we do is we do, we do have them list the, the particular allergies, um, but also to just try the process in a juice fashion. Now you don't have to consume certain things, but if you juice, then you may be able to bypass that reaction. Just like, like sometimes eats uh, a pineapple, they'll get like sores in their mouth, you know, so, so they can't eat it. But when they juice it, they don't get that same situation. So my recommendation is going to be, you know, make your list of allergies uh, and the stuff that you can't consume. But let's see, let's let's still stay with the juicing part of it. But when it comes down to eating raw, then, you know, stick with your certain salads and everything that you can. So focus on what you can do, not what you can't do, because even with your blood type diet, when you come off, you're going to realize that there's a lot of foods that you you love eating that actually is on your avoid list. So don't focus on what you have to avoid. Focus on what you can eat. And there's a whole bunch of food and a whole bunch of fruits out there that you can eat. So whatever we have to substitute, we'll do that. That's not a problem. Can a person uh -oh, on, no, that's great. There's a question for you. Can mm -hmm. a person on dialysis benefit from the program? Can they do a reset while on dialysis and, it, and it's uh, prescribed medicines? Got you. So um, I, I could take that question, but when obviously a lot of people have heard that question before, 
but I'm going to use this platform to put Sharon on the line so she can start her naturopathic training. So she's going to talk about uh, dialysis people because this is a big thing, especially when it comes to dialysis because you're, you're dealing with restrictions. So people need to know, okay, if I'm on dialysis and I have certain restrictions, then how can I do this process and program? Where you at, Sharon? You got to unmute yourself. There we go. Hey, I'm here. Can y'all hear me? Hello? Oh, yeah. yeah, we can hear you. Uh, okay. Um, so, yeah, a person on dialysis can absolutely. Can't hear her anymore. It's frozen, I think. We're frozen again, guys. We'll give them a moment. Let me look through here one second, guys. Now, we've had this question multiple times, but it's always great because I know there's probably a lot of new guests that are on the line. Anytime you are on dialysis, the biggest concern is you probably are under yeah, some kind of She fluid. had a taste of all of that, so. So you can do the program, but you definitely have to monitor your fluids. Um, who's that? Let me somebody speak in one moment. You have to monitor your fluids. Um, in fact, they've had some um, success with people that actually have been on dialysis who were able to actually improve kidney function. Um, as I mentioned in the opening portion of our presentation earlier before we started this session, we actually have some other great news as it relates to kidney function and how to increase that kidney function so that you can actually come off dialysis. So we'll be bringing you more good news regarding that. But yes, the cleanse has been used successfully. And the biggest thing is ensuring that they're not under any type of fluid restriction. And if they are, you would have to adjust your juices. Perhaps instead of doing 16 ounces, they might have to do 12 ounces three times a day or eight ounces three times a day based on the specific fluid restrictions presented to them by the person who's helping okay. them manage their dialysis. You guys are back. You guys are going in and out. <laughs> so yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's, I, I don't know. I think, I don't think, you know, every now and again, that happens uh, yeah. depending on where you are. We're in Oak Forest and Absolutely. we did find out after we moved that our, our bandwidth was different here as opposed uh -huh. to where we were before. So, so we're, so we're, I don't know, we're battling with more frequencies in the air over here, wherever over there, it was scarce. Um, but yeah, Sharon, you back on? Yep, I'm back. All right, okay, start, I don't know, but Melissa explained okay. a little bit of it, but go ahead. So yeah, so a person uh, on dialysis definitely needs to go through the detox process. Um, we need to make certain changes and tweaks within the regimen to accommodate diet restrictions, as well as fluid restrictions. Um, and then we want to monitor very closely how you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, because sometimes, you know, when you're doing more fruits, more veggies, potassium levels go up, um, and that can, you know, cause a, a problem with a person who's on dialysis, because paying close attention to the potassium uh, other minerals like magnesium and phosphorus are also going to be very important um, because those can be elevated or even depleted. So we definitely want to make sure to monitor that person very closely um, and, and also support that person with the, the type of assistance that they may need. Sometimes being on dialysis can cause a lot of weakness for that person. And then depending on how long they've been on dialysis makes a huge difference. So a, a great support system is very, very important uh, to their success within the process. Mm -hmm. Hey, thanks, Shane. So, and then another thing is that um, if they do have a doctor or someone that they're working with, when, with dialysis, we got to have a little bit of help uh, from the medical field. We got to have a little bit of help, which means we're going to need a little bit of communication and a little bit um, of teamwork with them because we need to know, we need to know that when they go to dialysis, uh, some people are doing dialysis three times a week, and they may do it from anywhere from two to four hours, which is a long time where they're removing fluids off their system that they built up over the course of the week. We need to know things like what their dry weight is and how much was taken off 
their body when they did dialysis because we want to we want to watch that the that that amount that's taken off we want to see that drop because the less that's taken off is letting us know that they're starting to filter more fluid out their system we need to know are they urinating more uh, because some people on dialysis are, aren't urinating at all which means they're not sending anything through the kidneys that's that's when we become so dependent upon a dialysis machine um, that we don't need our organs anymore. So that's why it's dangerous to depend on something outside of your own body, even antibiotics. Because when you depend on antibiotics outside of the body, then you start to shut down the power of your probiotics. Um, and there's a, there's a thing called the GFR. The GFR, which is, uh, which is your glom glomerular filtration rate, which is the rate at which you filter certain waste materials out of your body. Um, we can see this uh, partly on the um, bioscan. It shows, the bioscan will show you bun uh, and uric acid uh, and different things. And so the bun, which is blood, urea, nitrogen, these are waste products that when we see them on the bioscan, if they're elevated, these are waste materials that are normally filtered out by your kidneys. So you will get an idea, even before a person is dealing with kidney failure, that when they do a bio scan, we'll see in what direction their kidneys are going. And this is important because the scan is showing us stuff early before you get a diagnosis. So that's why the kidney report is important. We, we always use that, like when we do the free, the free scans, that kidney report is on there, that liver report is on there, heart and brain is on there, and we need to know where the pH of your body is. So that's why these four reports are important, especially when it comes to if a person is on dialysis, if a person is moving towards dialysis, uh, so that we can start making the necessary changes. Um, because if your filtration rate is high, then you're filtering out pretty well. But if the filtration rate is low and your creatine, creatinine levels are high, then that means that your kidneys are not doing too well. And so we don't have the instruments in order to figure out what the GFR rate is or creatinine level. But if we got information from the center or from the doctor and they're taking your blood and they're getting an idea, okay, your rates are going down, your creatinine is going down, your filtration rate is going up, then now what are we doing? We're taking our time and we're, we're healing at a, at a very gradual rate. So when it comes to dialysis, it's not a quick fix. It's not like if you're just trying to lose 20 pounds uh, and you can do it, maybe you can talk to your coach a little while. When it comes to dialysis, that's where I have to come in and I have to really interact with the person, connect with them, get the information uh, day in and day out. They have to monitor their blood pressure as well and some of the signs and symptoms that they're experiencing throughout the process to make sure that it's not from the kidney failure or if it's from the Herxheimer detox reactions. Uh, but to the, the answer the question, yeah, a person has to go on the cleanse in order to eradicate the kidney issue. Otherwise, you only have two choices, continue with dialysis or get on the organ transplant list and wait until somebody's able to donate you a kidney. So the recommendation would be to, if you had someone that was on dialysis, wanted to go on the cleanse to refer them to the master coach, which is you. Right. And what's, and what's going to happen is whoever's client or customer that is, they we will work are, with you. Exactly. Okay. Because that, that becomes your education. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Let's look at the next question here. Let's go to this first one first. I'll get to yours, Erica. That's a good question as well. Let's see here. Well, a lot of them are asking, how did we reach Dr. Prince? Here's the clarification on that. If you're a coach, we will send you the correct details so that you can reach Dr. Prince. But if you're not a coach, then you connect with your coach. Okay, let's see here. Okay, here's a question. This is from um, Abana. Why would someone who has been medically diagnosed with high cholesterol show normal range green on the bio scan? Mm -hmm. You want to take that, Sharon? Because I, I can easily tell you. Because And again, you need to know this too. So, but... Give a shot at it. <laughs> okay, so when it comes to the scan, uh, we're looking at what's going on in your body on a cellular level. Um, when they 
test your cholesterol with the doctor, they're looking at what's actually in your blood. So whatever you ate last night, whatever you ate this morning, you know, or, you know, how long it's been since you've eaten um, and the, the cholesterol that you consumed prior to that test is still hanging out in your blood. So they'll see it on your blood test. But when it comes to the, the scan, it's more so of what's going on in your liver that we're looking at. And so that's, that's going to be the difference. And, and also to piggyback on that, that's one of the reasons why you don't want to scan consistently and right after the cleanse. Because even, let's say you do a scan before the cleanse, and then you do the cleanse. But then people tend to want to do a scan right after the cleanse, and you're not going to see certain results yet because it takes a while for the body to rebalance, regest, and to, re and to compensate uh, for what just happened during that three weeks. That's why we tell people to wait about three to four weeks before you do a scan, and then you will see the difference in, in the, from the first scan in the second scan. So that's why you wanna wait, because we're talking about quantum physics. Quantum physics is a little bit different than Newtonian physics. So you definitely wanna wait. You don't understand quantum physics. Scientists don't understand quantum physics. I'm, I'm starting to understand it to an extent because of my experience, but man, as quantum physics is weird. Uh, so don't try to use normal mathematics and physics to try to figure out what's going on when it comes to the bio scan. Just understand that there has to be a, there has to be a time frame when you, in, in order to allow the body to readjust itself. And then when you come back and scan, that means that now your body is in that state now. So to go from one state to a next, it requires just a little bit more time. Okay. Great. Okay, here's another question. I have three questions this week from individuals with fibroids. One is on the call. Another is pending surgery to have a hysterectomy because the fibroids were removed and they returned. Um, another just had surgery to remove the fibroids. Can you speak about the cleanse as it relates to fibroids? Yes, so I'm, uh, yes. I'm going to hand this. I'm going to hand this over to the expert who who can share her <laughs> her own experience with fibroids because uh, I think that's important to talk to someone that has had the experience as as a what as opposed to someone who just understands the knowledge of it. Go ahead. Shane. Absolutely. So when it comes to fibroids, uh, understanding what actually causes them is going to be a, a very key component. So one is excess estrogens, and two is, of course, toxicity. Uh, those fibroids form uh, within the uterus to encapsulate the excess toxicity and excess estrogen. Um, where are we getting all this excess estrogen? It's in everything. It's in our hair care products, our skin care products, our clothes, um, and they're not direct estrogen. They're called xeno estrogens uh, so they're in a sense synthetic but they're still a type of estrogen to your body and your body is overloaded with them now and it has to find somewhere to put it so removing the fibroids doesn't cause removing the uterus doesn't deal with the cause you have to the system and deal we lost them again, but that is a great, a great answer. Um, hopefully, Erica, your clients on here listening and got a lot of great information out of that because, and that's what I was explaining and ever, you know, you, you know, a lot of times when you're younger, you get fibroids and that trash can of the body is trying to eliminate and it's pretty much just, like she said, it's encapsulating all the garbage trying to protect us, it's trying to keep us alive. So just removing the fibroid doesn't correct the problem and we really need to cleanse on a Seder level. So um, prayfully they all decide to do the 21 day cleanse. Let's see what the next question is. Okay. Yeah, you guys are, that's great. Let's see here. Any more questions guys? Look in here for questions. Let's see here. Okay, here's Belinda. I had my gallbladder removed 
Now I have frequent movements. So my question is, what can I do to relieve the pain I already um, I have in my stomach? <laughs> in my butt? Is that your, that was this? Is? Yeah, and my butt. Okay. I just want to make sure I was reading that right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. So what do we do to remove the, now have you done the cleanse, Belinda? Have you done the 21 day cleanse? Because I would imagine um, anything that's pain related is typically inflammation. And obviously something being removed from the body does create a sort of dis, an, an imbalance, even though technically they say we don't need our gallbladder. It's there for some purpose, right? Whether we recognize whether we need it or not. So <laughs> right. I would definitely say to Clint, oh, there you are, Eric. <laughs> just in time. Oh, yeah, we, we just checked. We just took an air. We need a pause for a station identification. <laughs> no problem. We're here at Wakana that for life. <laughs> you know, you, start, you need to start getting some commercials in here. Uh, Seriously. Just, <laughs> hey, that's, the next time we're going to have a few commercials. <laughs> I like Dr. Ron's question, too, when you finish that one. Okay, um, so what I want to do just to cap that off, uh, uh, xenoestrogens is stuff yes. that's in your skincare, uh, industrial products, plastics, foods, building supplies, insecticides, um, foods, uh, well, well it's all past, um, household products um, are, are, are uh, carry xenoestrogens. Uh, actually, even um, the chlorine coming out of the showers. So that's why sometimes people tend to put filters on their showers because xenoestrogen means estrogen like substances they're not the pure estrogens that we have in our body but they they mimic estrogen so we're taking in more estrogens from the mimicking of the estrogen than we are even from like if we're eating certain type of foods that we think like with soy because soy produces a certain level of estrogen but we're not talking about the estrogen we're getting from soy we're talking about the estrogen that we're getting from all type of stuff that's around us that's going to be around us all the time so in order to counter that, what Sharon is saying is that you have to flush and clean and detoxify your body because mm -hmm. when the liver, when the liver gets clogged, when you got a fatty liver, if you have a mild or a severe fatty liver, then there's a good chance you're not even breaking down any estrogen, whether it's the natural estrogen or the xenoestrogen, you're not breaking it down. So in order for your, your body is gonna protect you from that estrogen, by encapsulating the estrogen in a place where it can grow. This is, this is a, this is an ingenious plan because think about it for a second. What if that estrogen was encapsulated in a place where it couldn't grow much, but it would cause a lot of damage. The fact that this, this fibroid is growing in the uterus and think about the uterus, the uterus can, can have a, can carry a baby up to nine and 10 pounds. Now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend keeping them until 10 pounds, but think about it. When people say, well, I have a, a, a fibroid the size of a grapefruit. Well, that's nothing compared to a nine pound baby. That time that it takes for that fibroid to grow is the time that you're being given to address the underlying issue. The fibroid is not your enemy, just like a cancer tumor is not your enemy. We've just been led to think that it is. Even the microbes in your body are not there to kill you. They're there to help you. But we have a war on microbes. See, we have a lot of miseducation, and that's causing us to do the wrong things for the right reasons. So when you detoxify your body, guess what? You're going to flush out that liver, and that's going to start the process of breaking down the estrogen. And just as Sharon has experienced, the, the fibroids shrink. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that is amazing. And even when you think about the xenoestrogens, people don't realize you have all the synthetic furniture sometimes at your home. You don't want to buy the real leather. So you mm -hmm. get the synthetic leather. So you could be setting on something all day long that's causing your estrogen to go out of control. <laughs> right, exactly. Take furniture. So you have to be careful where you sit down and who's out <laughs> Right, <laughs> right. You look around, you know, everything, everything looks suspect to you. Like, wait a minute. And get that, that real leather, y'all. It costs money. <laughs> okay. Also, just put this question out there. How many of you use the products Vaseline and baby oil? Those two products are uh, basically wash back or, or runoff 
from petroleum, which is mm -hmm. gasoline. And those also contain xenoestrogen. So if you're using Vaseline and baby oil and you're getting some great skin benefits, but you're also toxifying your body with those products. So just putting that out there. Thank you, Sharon. Know what you got to know what you're putting on your body, guys. This we is have phenomenal awesome. skincare products at Wakana. I just thought I'd say that. Now, no I, knew, I, 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 knew, I, I felt like you was going to say that too, Phyllis. I know you did. You know me. I'm the chief sales officer. Hey, that hey that, that, that's the, hey, hey, uh, Melissa, that's the moment where the commercial comes in. <laughs> we'll have those 30-second right. commercials. <laughs> Get ready, y'all. They're coming, okay? <laughs> And by the way, let's, let's in fact, we might drop one tomorrow. So watch social media. <laughs> okay. right. Oh my gosh. So we're going, going, uh, exactly. So we have, so we have the question about the gallbladder. So let's make sure we answer that one about the gallbladder being removed and now they're dealing with pain. So what's going on there and what can they do to help that? Okay. So they dealing, uh, did they previously have gall stones? Or where is that pain coming from? Because sometimes people with gallstones may have certain pain, but if you got the gallbladder removed, um, then there's really no telling exactly where that pain could be coming from because mm -hmm. nerves innervate your body and what's happening in one area can actually be rooted somewhere away from that area. So that's why with napropaths, and if Dr. Betty's on there, maybe she can kind of chime in when it comes to pain. Are you on here, Dr. Betty? If you are, chime in at some point, but when you, when with napropaths, they have a way of, of they know how the nerves innervate the organs. So if there's a pain like in your arm, they may have to deal with something on the other side of your body or on your foot. That's why, like when we did that reflexology, uh, and when we did that massage, and they were and they were um, massaging the base of our feet. Uh, there are certain nerves that that end in our in our foot region that when you when you massage those nerves, it actually begins to stimulate uh, the relief of pain somewhere else in the body. So that goes way back. Now we can we can take pain medication, or you can do pain cream, but then at the end of the day, you still need to understand well what's really causing that pain. And she's and um, she's asked her the question now. She says, "No, the pain is coming from going to the bathroom. So the pain is in her stomach and the butt." butt. But whenever she uses the restroom. Oh, okay, okay. So the pain now, now, okay. So here's another question. Uh, describe the pain. Is it is it a diffuse pain? Is it a is it a local pain? Is it, is it does it happen when you push? So this is something that even that the medical doctors would talk to you about. They say, okay, what kind of pain is it? Diffuse? Does it radiate uh, somewhere? So these are things that we need to know um when it comes to pain because pain can be anything uh, now she's not yet done the clean so she she did clarify that just let us know the type of pain if you can answer that we'll finish yours otherwise we have another question that's in line so we're trying to exactly okay yeah. so i'm gonna let her answer the type of pain and we're gonna okay. get back to yours um, as okay. you're answering that here's another question i have been asked if the cleanse can help with aids and hsv2 since they are said to be incurable H, well, the question is, who says they're incurable? Now, um, you know, I know I know a story about it. I, I first heard a story, even before I became a naturopath, I heard a story about a gentleman who was, who was diagnosed with HIV, um, and he wind up going raw. You know, he, started, he, he became, he had a raw diet, so he let go to meat, became raw, and got tested months later, and they couldn't even find the virus anymore. So right there was my... That was my prelude into this whole journey. Like, wait a minute, I was told, just as you were told, that there is no particular cure. But you gotta understand that there's a cure. Uh, now let, me, let me stop saying that word, not a cure. There's a way to resolve uh, any issue that's going on in the body. When we say incurable, what does it really mean on a spiritual level? That means it's curable from within. You have to go within to cure that. Sometimes it's not even something physical. It may be something going on on a mental or emotional level. In that situation, then the cleanse is definitely recommended because one, in order to get rid of the mental and emotional toxins, you have to get your body to a higher frequency. 
when we're eating a lot of meat throughout life, believe it or not, meat lowers our frequency. Um, uh, even, to the, even to the point of disease. What is the question? No, I don't know. Oh, okay, yeah. Meat lowers our frequency uh, to, the, to the frequency of disease. Now, um, megahertz. So I'm, I'm just gonna throw this out here real quick. So the frequency of disease, like 57 megahertz. Your brain operates on 90 megahertz. So therefore, when the brain starts to drop, that's when people start getting headaches because if the body's energy is low or if there's something going on in the body and that, and, that, and that energy or frequency in the brain starts to drop, you're gonna feel the difference. But when we eat a certain food, we start to lower the frequency of our bodies down to the, to the frequency of disease and then that opens the door to many other conditions in the body. So when the guy went raw and he stopped eating a certain type of food, what did he do? He raised his frequency. He raised his frequency. And when he did that, he became more alkaline. Get it? When he became more alkaline, it's been proven that disease cannot survive in an alkaline body, but it thrives in an acidic body. And let me say why we all have in our body what's called um, opportunistic organisms. Opportunistic organism, you can look that up, opportunistic. That means that when they have the opportunity, they will cause disease. Does it mean, that means that you have viruses, you have microorganisms like bacteria, fungus, you have all of these things in your body that's living symbiotically together, harmonious together, and they're not causing any disease, but they're there. When your body drops to a certain frequency, you, you literally are cutting on a compost switch. Compost means decomposition. When you cut that switch on, what are you actually telling these microorganisms to do? You're telling them now to begin the process of decomposition to begin the process of demolishing the organism, the temple, which is your body. So they're gonna go to work. So that's why it's important to keep your frequency high, keep your energy high, keep your alkalinity in place because you don't want that switch to cut on. That means that whatever virus in your body uh, that, that's already there is gonna seize the opportunity now to create disease. So that's why they may tell you, hey, you know, it's uncurable because a medical doctor doesn't a holistic approach to eradicating disease. So to them, it is incurable. But what they're really saying is that it's curable within. If you want to go within, you got to go holistic. Okay. That is powerful. And she, now Belinda came back like, so basically her pain is cramps in her stomach and the pain in the butt is from going so much, like a burning sensation. And she's not done the cleanse, keep in mind. So this is the gallbladder being removed. She's going regularly now, but now she's dealing with this cramping in the stomach and pain in the buttocks. Got it. So it sounds like she just, she has some inflammation, uh, which, which doctors may diagnose gastritis, which is basically inflammation in the gastric system. Uh, and it could be a sign of, of Crohn's disease. It could be a sign of, of a many different uh, issues like, what's, what's another one out there? Diverticulitis. Um, when you have diverticulitis, it does cause pain because these are pockets that are formed in your gastrointestinal tract. And guess where these pockets are coming from? Uh, and this may be something that hasn't been diagnosed yet, but it does cause certain pain. So I've had people with diverticulitis uh, at, tell me that there are certain foods that they can't do because of the, the infl inflammation it will cause in their gastrointestinal tract, which will cause pain. And remember your gastrointestinal tract from your mouth all the way down to your anus is an open track. So it's literally open to the environment in a sense. That's why it's lined with mucus. The mucus is actually there also for protection, but too much mucus can also be detrimental as well. There always has to be a little balance in there. So um, if you are a meat eater, there's a, there's a list of things that could be going on in your system. It doesn't matter what's going on. When you start detoxing the body and you come off the meat, for a few weeks, you come off the dairy, which is also creating excessive mucus. And then you leave the cooked food alone for a while in order to restore your enzyme levels back. Um, and then also during the process, you're putting probiotics 
back into your gut. It's going to start to heal your gastrointestinal lining. So if you're dealing with inflammation or, or, or pain in that area, you have to heal the gut. One of the products we have for that is the Parasite Mucus Buster. It has, it has certain it has certain herbal products in it that actually is designed to heal the gastrointestinal tract. So try the cleanse uh, and watch how it works in your system. You know, don't go to the doctor running all these tests left and right just so they can find something that they can diagnose you with so that they can put you on some type of drug or medication that's tied to that particular diagnosis. You see what I'm saying? That's, that's the old way of doing things. We don't need more drugs and medication system because drugs are toxic as well. Chemical, they're chemicals. So if there's something going on in your lining that deals with any type of itis, you're going to start to see some of those side effects that you hear on the commercials, you know, after they tell you about the drug and then they zoom through all of these side effects. Well, you're going to start seeing that once you start taking medication for what you're dealing with right now. So go back to the to, to the herbs, go back to the garden and let nature heal your intestines. And we have some distributor commercials regarding the pain cream. Obviously you can put that on, on the belly, but the internal use of the uh, CBD might help with the other portions that you might not want to put other places because you got, <laughs> but Belinda said, she says, I, I really need to do the cleanse. So I will have a testimony and a flat stomach. Yes, Belinda, there you go. <laughs> That's the answer, right? So let's follow up to the question about HIV and HSV2. So this is a herbal simplex. Would the same thing apply? Because you always hear people talk about herpes, how that's incurable. Mm -hmm. Is that similar to yeah. HIV? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I, I, do, I, do know, I do know some people who have um, eradicated that condition now. See here, and let me say this, I gotta say this. Um, there are, there are, we have tr trillions of viruses in our body and on our body, trillions. We have billions of bacteria in our body and on our body. The thing about, about herpes, simplex one or simplex two, a lot of people dealing with like the vaginal herpes, those are triggered a lot of times even by stress. But yeah, once you contract the herpes, they say, what do they say? They say, well, you know, you got it for life. Um, and that could be so depending on how you change your lifestyle. Just like with HIV, it's all about changing your lifestyle. You have to be drastic. You just can't do something here or something there expect it to go away. No. No, it's not going to happen that way. You have to be drastic. Just like the guy who got rid of the HIV, he went from uh, being a cooked food meat eater to being a raw food vegan. And he, he, he eradicated and got rid of that virus. Now, does that mean the virus is gone permanently? No, the virus can come back. Just like herpes can come back. Everything can come back. It's all about the process. You can never get rid of something permanently and not expect that there's a chance that it can come back. It's all about adjusting your lifestyle. And once you adjust your lifestyle, you will, you will, you will cause that virus uh, to become dormant. You will cause HIV to become dormant. If a, if a person, if a doctor tested you for any disease out there, whether you're having symptoms or not of it, he will find those diseases in your body because we carry all of these diseases in our body. We manifest disease based upon the condition of our body. We're not getting them from somewhere else. They already are in us. You, you know, they've never told you that before. We're thinking that we're getting them from here, getting them from there. No, these germs are in us already. Now, they're in us in, in certain form. Once they start to manifest, they can become a virus. They can become a germ, like a bacteria. They can become a fungus. They can become, and then they can become a particular disease that already has a label and a name on it. So don't think that, you're contracting diseases. No, you're formulating these things from within your own body based upon the condition of your body, which is also based upon the lifestyle that you're living. So when you talk about a, the flat belly lifestyle, it's designed to neutralize all of that stuff and get you into a healthy state where you're processing and expressing the higher aspect of your genetics. You got to understand, I'm predisposed to diabetes because it's in my family. That doesn't mean I've never manifested diabetes and I don't plan to manifest it, but it's in me, which means that if I start eating like the way my mama used to eat, then guess what? In a few years, I'm going to develop diabetes. It's going to seem like a new diagnosis, but no, it's not new. It's just that what I started doing is going to bring it out. 
is going to cause my genetics to express diabetes, to express HIV, to express the herpes virus, all that stuff. So just understand it's all about your health. Don't focus on the problem. Focus on the solution. It's a sign to start making some changes in your life. Okay. There's a question from Dr. Roz, and I, I'm going to first answer it, then I'll let you answer it. It okay. says, uh, will we ever hear Dr. Prince go through the other items of the full report just to hear his description of each item? And so I know everyone has been trained on the four reports. I think maybe we've trained on five or six extra during the course, course of the classes. I know on Thursday, if you're a wellness coach, you should join us on Thursday. The next class is this coming Thursday. We're going to have those classes either once or twice a month. And I know you've mentioned in our previous class that you're going to actually develop a curriculum where you can learn about the other reports. So that's not developed yet, but I know that's coming and you stay mm -hmm. tuned for when Definitely. we're gonna roll it out, but you yes. can go ahead and just chime in on that. Well, no, that's, that's a good question. And, and I feel, I, you know, ultimately that's what we wanna do. You know, the fact is the BioScan is now in your hands. It's now, you're now responsible for learning everything about that scan as you can, because you have it now. You know, you're not gonna go 20 years and just still do the four reports. <laughs> You know, you're going to now take the time and even not when I'm waiting on me, um, when you go to the bio scan and I know it can, it can be a little technical and a little difficult, but each report, when you scroll all the way down, each report has little descriptions of every report, you know, every item that's on there. So with heart disease, I'm not heart disease, but with, the, with cardiovascular, cerebrovascular, you see the report when you first go on there, but then if you scroll down, it'll give you a description of uh, blood viscosity, uh, of blood fat, of um, vascular resistance. You know, so it's, it gives you a little description. It means before, what, what I'm gonna probably do is, is uh, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to better explain those things so that it'll make more sense because right now they're in terms, the translation from, Chinese into English, and let me tell you, before now was was terrible. You know, it, it was like you know, it was like they were trying to translate it from Chinese because it was it was originated in China. So therefore, the original language was Chinese, and then they tried to translate it to English, and it just wasn't making sense. So if you didn't have any type of uh, medical education and understanding, you really couldn't understand certain items. But because remember, because of my emergency medicine experience. I understood how to translate that from uh, what it was saying. And even, even if they didn't write it properly, I was able to decipher it uh, and, be, and I was able to explain it. So that's why it's important for me to put that together so I can explain it better so you can understand just like you do now. Because Absolutely. I, I agree because you're, you said the key thing was that with your background, uh, a lot of us, I don't have that background, so I can read something and I can guess it, but I'm happy that you're putting that together so that now I'll know, because when you took me, when I sat with you and listened to you do the scans, I was good on those five issues that we're talking about because mm -hmm. I listened to you, so I'm real happy about that. Uh, because I couldn't decipher or know that I was saying the right thing if I just exactly. knew it for myself. Exactly. Right. And, and that's I, the other I, reason, too, though, I think when people are doing the reports, you got to be careful, especially for new people. You're just starting and you're guessing, right? You don't want to guess. Yeah. But you want to kind of keep it to those four or five reports and I let everybody agree. know if they want to take it to their doctor, take it to their doctor who might have a more scientific approach until we feel comfortable getting this expert training that we're going to get. From I'm glad you said that, Melissa, because again, for as long as I've been doing it, I don't guess. I don't try to guess. I say, look, this is what we're going to concentrate on until we're better trained, because I don't want to give out wrong information. And sometimes when people ask you stuff, you just think you need to give them an answer. But no, you don't. You need to mm -hmm. say no. Your doctor. I'm not trained <laughs> on that. I'm not the doctor. So, yeah. And also, I want to I want to uh, piggyback off that. Uh, if you decide to take this to your medical doctor, um, just understand they may understand the scan, but they may not understand it as it pertains to holistic health, right. mm -hmm. because this isn't something that they, they they haven't learned this in medical school. It's, it's not that they don't understand anatomy and physiology; they know all of the big names and the big terms. But 
the way you need it explained, you need it explained in a way where we're trying to find out what's causing the high blood pressure and the heart disease, not how it's going to be treated. So if the, if the medical doctor decides that he wants to kind of try to figure it out, or if you decide to take it to your medical doctor, I don't have a problem talking to your medical doctor. I mean, I've, I've never had a problem talking to anybody's medical doctor. I'm not that type of person. I will talk to them and hopefully educate them and help. Heck, they might become your client. Yeah. So don't be afraid. That don't mean bum rush your doctors. So I don't, I don't want to, I don't know next week, all these doctors calling me now, but, but I'm just, <laughs> let me put that disclaimer on there. Um, but if you feel more comfortable in, if, you, if you're cool with your doctor and you think that they might be okay with it, or if you're afraid, make sure the doctor knows what you're doing. Because some people, they're a, little, they're a little scared, like, hey, okay, I need my doctor to notice because I don't want nothing to happen to me. Then let's talk. But I'm going to tell you, I can count on one hand the doctors that I've talked to out of thousands of people that I've dealt with this as far as bioscan. So, but I'm, but I am open to it. Yeah, and that's a great point. We can recruit all of our doctors, guys, by doing this technique. So let's bombard Dr. Prince. No. Right, right, and I'm right, and then listen to <laughs> Sharon. We'll, 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 ta we'll tag team, okay? Right. That's that's why I'm gonna hurry. Up. I'm gonna hurry up and teach everybody yeah. all the reports, so y'all won't. So they can go to any coach and talk about the bioscan. <laughs> Now, someone's asking if the flush can cause a UTI. I can, I can answer that. Let me move yeah, ahead, Sharon. Um, so, no, the flush does not cause UTIs. However, uh, it can awaken the bacteria that's sitting within the uh, urinary tract and, and cause some discomfort. So, if you are experiencing a UTI, um, there are supplements that you can take actually during the cleanse to help get that out of your system. Because what you don't want to do during the cleanse is take antibiotics, which is what your doctor will prescribe for you. If you go to the doctor and say, hey, I got a UTI, they don't understand the cleansing process. And so that's what they're going to do. But there is a great product. Um, and I'll put it in the notes. It's um, in the chat. It's called UT Vibrance. It comes in form and it also comes in powder form. You want to do the powder form uh, and you take it basically like an antibiotic and it will help to flush that out of your system along with the detox process. Is that the one with the 400 billion bacteria? No, that's, no, that's uh, the probiotic. Gotcha. which also is in powder form and actually would benefit you during that process as well because you want to put in that good healthy bacteria um, into you know the urinary tract into the digestive tract everything so mm -hmm. that 400 billion is a five-day five day five, uh, you look at the program yeah, get him in there. Second. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. So, yeah, it's a, a five day program. The UT Vibrance uh, product mm -hmm. is actually like a two and a half day program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, so that's, that's like, that's something that the coaches uh, do need to know so that when people do have these issues, especially with the bladder, um, they can recommend that, you know. Uh, until until we have a product that we can give them for that you know so so uti uh and then also the the probiotics they're in powder form already so they're permissible during the cleanse as well did you put that in the chat sharon yes i'm working on it um uh, could you answer that what's that question about pro pronounced veins in the extremities um <laughs> it's from berlin no. Um, oh, Berlene, talking. can you hear me? Yes, we Hi, can hear you, Berlene. Hi, you talking everybody. about you talking about varicose? I think so. Um, I'm just—they're not painful. I'm just noticing them, and so is my dog. That's that's why I was concerned. So, say on the side of my leg, uh, on my on my shin, she'll sniff that area or certain areas where the veins mm. are. So. And since if she noticed them, I'm thinking there's something that's going on in my mm -hmm. body that, or some changes that, you know, my dog can sense. 
or detect right. and within my I'm veins. So, mm-hmm. uh, so I'm coming in, you know what? Anim- a- animals, uh, animals are amazing, which leads us to why we shouldn't be eating animals. Um, uh, cause think about it. I mean, that's, you know, we, a dog is an animal, uh, but for some reason we, we have domesticated dogs. We have domesticated cats and in other countries, they eat dogs and they eat cats. Uh, let me see. One time, I, I think I went to Egypt. I went to Egypt and I went to the, a zoo in Egypt and literally they had cats in the cages. Not, not big lions, they, no, they had pet cats. So it, wherever you go, you're gonna have different types of animals uh, domesticated. But when it comes to varicose veins or pr- pronounced veins, a lot of times it has to do with um, increased pressure inside your vascular system. And this is something that doesn't happen, it's over time. Uh, um, do you have any issues when it, or have you been on any medication for blood pressure or any cardiovascular issues? Never, I'm not on any medications, I strictly sup- supplements. Good, good, so, herbs. So, so when it comes to the pressure inside your vascular system, um, it does have a lot to do with the diet, your previous diet up until this point. Have you, are you still consuming certain foods or certain uh, proteins from yes. animals or? Yes, I, I haven't started my cleanse. I eat fairly healthy, but I haven't gone in like you guys on that 21 day cleanse. And I am ready. I'm going so, shopping tomorrow. So. I've been so, going shopping for a while, but I'm going tomorrow and I just need to get started. So, so there's yeah. there's gonna be there's gonna be a couple of things and you know Melissa may even have a, a 30 second commercial for this coming in, but you know, <laughs> you wanna you wanna detox your body, so you wanna work from the inside, but you also wanna work from the outside. So there are some topical things that you can put on those veins as well. Um, you may hear commercials like like uh, what people putting topical stuff on there and the varicose veins go away. You know, that may be the case, but remember, whatever caused it is internal, not external. So the cleanse is addressing the internal, but then there are certain creams that you could put on that can deal with it externally as well. And Sharon is putting something out there. Wait, Sharon, is that Wakana cream? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. And I'm familiar with that that brand. They have a lot of uh, mushroom-related uh, products as well. Planetary, is it? Oh, yeah, yes. it's a, a great product. Also, can mm-hmm. you just type that in the, the chat so I can mm-hmm. copy it? I will. Mm-hmm. Can I say so something? Yeah. Um, I, I, everything that I see people are asking about, uh, in most cases, they haven't used the cleanse. And I just think that all of those things are toxins and being uh, in our system that we have. And that I think the first step everybody should do is just take the 21 day cleanse. You know, I mean, I say 21 because that's what I was taught and that's what worked for me. Uh, But if it has to be the seven day cleanse, but whatever your, your issue is, I think the cleanse can do nothing but make it better. That's that's thank you, Phyllis. uh, Cause we, we don't, we don't always know who has done it, you know, as you guys may know. Yeah, so I'm, when reading, they come, when I'm the, reading as they're saying, putting it in the chat. You know, most of the uh, things come from people that have never done the cleanse. Got it. Are people that have okay, done the so, cleanse and they're asking for their clients. So right, a lot of yes. clients are skeptical. Got it. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. Right, so, I'm not making an excuse. <laughs> not no, I'm getting you, girl. I, I, I'm speaking. No, I'm directing this one straight to you, girl. I'm no. listening. <laughs> uh, and, and I need to, and I, and I know, and I want to. My 90 year old mother is, is, is here with me, and a lot of times, I, every day, I, I'm cooking for her. And then I'm smelling this food, and I'm hungry, and it just seems like I relapse all the time. And right. Um, doing it with her. Both of y'all go. <laughs> okay. so she, but she, she likes to eat healthy things, but she likes processed food. She likes, and my sister is no help at all. You know, she's constantly bringing it in the house, bologna and salami, and she does all this, all kind of stuff. And so it's it causes problems in the household. And I'm just trying to figure out how to deal with it in a peaceful way. I'm afraid that's stressful way in my house. Yes, thank you. 
Wow, yeah. And here's another question, guys. I think there's three more questions in the chat, so we're going to try to get to everybody. Can someone that keeps getting canker sores in the mouth? I mean, obviously, there's various reasons that causes canker sores, but they're asking if they can do the cleanse, which we know the answer is yes. But do you want to speak on cancer or, um, canker sores? Want to speak on that, Sharon? Um, sure. So, that Dr. Um, Betty, is, I, I think she tried to chime in. Dr. Betty, are you are you here? Finally. I was always here. Man, we 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 asked for you a long time ago. <laughs> But we'll we'll come back to you. We're gonna come back yeah, to you, Dr. Betty, because we we want to say okay. we want to talk to you about uh, uh, the pain manipulation. Uh, what we a question we got earlier. So we're gonna come back to you in a little bit. Okay. Okay. Don't go so wish. <laughs> dealing with the canker sores. Um, anytime you have canker sores, um, that's that's one of your body's ways of trying to get rid of some sort of toxin. Uh, it's just like having boils or uh, different types of eruptions in the skin. It's your body's way of trying to eliminate some sort of toxin. So you definitely um, want to flush and cleanse. One second, guys. Let me mute out somebody. That darn Carla again. <laughs> I got it. Carla is the one. Culprit. <laughs> <laughs> Who's hired? Yeah, you? so um, definitely start start cleansing and flushing. You may have some some discomfort because of the acidity in the fruits and vegetables starting out initially, um, but you you just gotta grin and bear it and get through it. And once you come out on the other side, you'll be canker free. <laughs> mm -hmm. And and uh, just to add to that, you know some. You know, it, it, it may get worse before it gets better, but that's that's called Herxheimer detoxification symptoms and reactions. And right. and here's a good the thing about it is that you you want you you have to understand that the hurt the, these symptoms mean that the process is actually working in your favor. What we've been mm -hmm. taught is that when you have any type of discomfort, any type of symptoms, run to Walgreens, run to your doctor, call your 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 uh, PPO, and get something to relieve you of those symptoms. That's what we've been taught. When you, when you were born into just one system, you, your frame of reference is gonna be totally different than how it actually is. So that's why it's so important to have a coach because the coach is there to guide you through the symptoms that you're gonna have that you've been taught to treat with over-the-counter synthetic drugs. So welcome the discomfort. You have to learn how to become comfortable with discomfort uh, in order to get past it. So when you find yourself in hell, just keep on going until you get through it is what Sharon is saying. But you will get through it. Thank you. I take Anastrozola, A-N-A-S-T-R-O-Z-O-L-A, once daily for five years. I have some side effects. Will starting this cleanse give me more side effects? Um, well, I guess it kind of kind of piggyback of what I just said. You. I wouldn't, I don't call, the cleanse don't, they're not side effects. Um, side effects come from drugs. And let me say this, the side effects with drugs are not side effects. They are direct effects. They use side effects because that sounds better. Most drugs have direct effects and those direct effects have other drugs which have direct effects. So you're just in a system where you're just experiencing direct effects which is leading to more drugs that's causing more direct effects. So let us just clear that up. It's not about side effects. Um, the cleanse give you reactions to the cleansing process because your body is killing off germs. It's killing off bacteria. But where is that stuff going? It's going into the bloodstream. Now, remember what we talked about with leaky gut. When something comes into the bloodstream, what is your immune system going to do? It's going to react. It's reacting because you're killing off something. That's why the Herxheimer detoxification reaction means that the process is working because your immune system is reacting. So you don't want to suppress that with more drugs and, and synthetic chemicals. You want to facilitate that process and allow your body to release that stuff because there's a certain time frame that it's going to do. You may have symptoms anywhere from in, in the third day. You may have it in the second week. I think uh, Minister, Minister Mooney he was, he was doing well until that second week, and then he thought he had COVID, only to find out after testing that he didn't have COVID. 
So it depends on who you are, how toxic your system is, when you'll have certain discomfort. Our goal is to troubleshoot how to get you through that discomfort. What we need to start, what, we, what I do want to start telling people and the coaches to tell people, when you start your cleanse, make sure you get you some Epsom salt before you start your cleanse. You don't want to, you don't want to start having shivers and chills like you got the flu, and then you got to try to go to the store and get some Epsom salt to take your Epsom salt bath, because that's one of the ways to mitigate that, that whole experience. You want to have that Epsom salt already, dump it in that bathtub, sit in that water for a while, and let that water of, uh, pull those toxins out your system and bring you back into some type of balance. And okay. to add to that, Eric, could you, or Dr. Prince, can you speak on the fact that that's a hormone treatment is for um, breast cancer. And it's a oh, yeah. specific type of breast cancer. So I know our cleanse and this lifestyle, <laughs> as far as extending life, keeping your body healthy, it's probably an overall good habit to have no matter what you're exactly. on. I think you speak mm -hmm. on that because that's, I think, the critical point. Well, well, it, it, um, it reminds me of when I went to Israel. I went to Israel and I spent time at the Dead Sea. They call it the Dead Sea because there's no life, no, no, no organism life uh, in there. But the people that live there call it the Sea of Life. Why do they call it the Sea of Life? Because it gives life. It's rich with minerals. And what happens is when I when I went to the when I when I went to the Dead Sea, I was able to lay out on the sea and not sink. You cannot sink in this sea. It's a big sea. You can be out in the middle of the water and you will never go to the bottom. You just float. The reason that happens is because it's a hypertonic solution, which means it's rich in minerals, and these minerals extract the toxins out of your body through your skin. That's why they, when I when I went there it was a lot of it was a lot of elderly people uh, there that was in the the Dead Sea because they had all these ailments these skin ailments and these issues some of them might have even had cancer that was their recommendation to go there and allow for that those those rich minerals to pull and extract those toxins out through the skin and when I went there I actually had eczema it was eczema on my arm and when I got in that sea. My, my skin burned so bad, but the next day, a couple of days later, the eczema went away. So no, it, it, it's definitely important to get that Epsom salt and to keep it with you because if you're dealing with anything, whether it's cancer or if you're dealing with certain uh, detox symptoms, that's the easiest and quickest way to resolve it without being, without trying to go to the ER uh, and have them try to figure out what's going on with you and utilize their chemicals and drugs to try to treat it. I'm going to skip down and we're going to go back and pick up a couple of your questions, but this was related to what you just said. How often can you do Epsom salt baths? Epsom salt during the cleanse. Uh, and it's up to you. You don't have to do Epsom salt unless you really need to. If, if you want to do it within that first three days, I would say maybe, uh, maybe each day uh, for maybe an hour or so. You, you know, there's really no rhyme or reason. It's going to be pretty much up to you how long you want to sit in there. But I would say no longer than maybe a, an hour or two. Um, that may even be too long itself, but it, it really comes down to how it makes you feel thereafter. You may not need it the next day. You may not feel like you have it. The Epsom salt bath really initially is to just assist your body in eliminating the toxins without having a reaction to the detox process. Um, but other than that, it is going to be up to you how often you want to do it. You can do it anywhere from two to three times a week. I wouldn't go more than two to three times a week while you're cleansing. Now, we have someone who's actually completed a couple of cleanses. They're doing more raw food um, than cooked. They're not doing any meat. They were able to get off their blood pressure medication. Um, they're doing herbal supplements for blood pressure, but they still are dealing with an elevated blood pressure of 140 over 90. Any suggestions for th this person? 140 over 90. Well, I guess the question is, what did it used to be before? You know, was it was it 150, 160 over 100? Um, because 140 over 90, if that's a lower blood pressure than before. Karen, if you want to speak on that. Yeah. Well, before I was on medication, and so it was always normal. Mm -hmm. uh, 120 over 70, uh, probably one. 
as high as 130, maybe 120 to 130 over 70, but the uh, 70 to 70 to 80. But, but since I've stopped taking the medicine, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. That's on medication. Do you know what it was prior to being medicated? No, because I was taking medication for 20 years. Got you. Yeah, that, yeah, that, is, a, that is a long time uh, to be on a medication. So I'm going to tell you what happens sometimes is that uh, when you come off the medication, uh, your body has been dependent upon it for a certain period of time. Right. Uh, and, and sometimes it's just like coffee. Um, and that's another thing. Are you a coffee drinker? No. Okay. Did you ever drink coffee? No, because I okay. never liked the taste. Okay, but that's good. So let me use coffee as an example. So a lot of times people who are coffee drinkers, um, they drink it for so long to the point where it becomes a part, the chemical of caffeine becomes a part of their system. And so if they step away from it for any period of time, then they get this anxiety uh, until they drink their coffee. And then now they're back, you know, kind of calm. You've heard people where, hey, don't talk to me until I've had my coffee. Because <laughs> they, <laughs> you know, because uh, unfortunately, you know, all things in moderation, coffee can be an addiction, you know, especially if you're drinking it constantly. I mean, one, maybe one cup a day, you know, is, is good, or one cup every couple of days or every once in a while. But, but if you're drinking it a few times a day, co that caffeine is another chemical in your system um, that's going to affect you. Uh, and do you know that plants, plants use, plants use caffeine, uh, cocaine in their vacuoles to protect them against their enemies. This is what plants do. So th these are, this is stuff that I'm even just learning now when it has to. So, so that's why you got to understand that these chemicals are strong chemicals, strong compounds. And so when you're taking something for a long period of time, your body, it has become you. Uh, in fact, yeah. I had a gentleman, when he let go of meat, he started, he broke out in boils all over his skin because he stopped eating meat. It was a reaction to him letting go of the meat. So because he had been eating it for so long. So you can have reactions to things that you've been eating a while or that you've been taking in. And then once you stop it for any period of time, it can affect you. It can cause high blood pressure. Uh, it can cause anxiety. Um, and it can cause a, a whole array of things. But I would say continue the process of detoxing. So you have gone through the cleanse. And also just watch what you're eating because something there can be also something triggering your blood pressure go up that's physical, but there may be also something that's not physical that's triggering your blood pressure to go up. Um, and I think Cheryl John can maybe chime in on that one at some point. She might not be on here, but um, that was something that Cheryl John can talk about as far as having elevated blood pressure after several cleanses. You want to also get exercise into your, into your lifestyle because when you exercise, you also help to bring that down as well because you create those happy hormones in your body. So it's not always what you're eating that makes you sick. Sometimes it's what's eating at you. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I'm rebounding every day, um, five days a week. I do the hula hoop in between and I'm jumping rope a little bit. I just started, I'm up to about seven minutes at a time. Cool, so. cool. Well, well just, just stay there. If, it, if it's not broke, don't treat it. If you're not having any symptoms, just because you have a high blood pressure, just, just leave it alone for right now and let it subside. But don't be checking your blood pressure constantly because sometimes even that, knowing that it's at 140 over 90 or, or, or 100 can cause you to have that anxiety. Uh, so just keep doing what you're doing. Um, if you're not having any issues right now, any dizziness or anything like that, then don't worry about it for now. Keep doing what you're doing. Stay holistic. Uh, and, and then continue cleansing at least once or twice a year. And at some point you look back on it and it'll just be normal. And I would just add to that increase the amount of green, green vegetables because that's high in vitamin K. And a lot of our blood pressure medications tell you not to eat green vegetables because it counteracts, because that's what they're giving you in those blood pressure medications. They're giving you high levels of vitamin K. That blood yep. So, um, and yeah. And that also that also reminds me, Melissa. Uh, how was your sodium intake? Uh, are you are you monitoring that as well? 
So yes, I be- am. Because I had asked this question once before, and Dr. Kim, uh, you know, started me to reading the labels more closely right, and right. Um, not adding salt as well. So, Good. yes, I am monitoring. But, you know, I'm like, uh, I got a portable blood pressure thing, uh, piece of equipment, and so now I'm checking it every day and mm. waiting for the number to change, and it just never changes. Well, well, stop checking it for right now. Like I said, <laughs> if, it, if you're not symptomatic, then, it, then don't go into treating it. You're doing everything else you're supposed to do. Um, you know, and then also, are you, are you doing any seafood, like shellfish, shrimps, lobster, crab, stuff like that? No, because I had um, gave this, had a discussion with Sharon about it. And she asked me, because I told her I was eating the seafood. And so she said, you need to eliminate the seafood. So I have eliminated that. Okay. Okay. Well, well don't, don't, you don't have to check it every day waiting for it to go down. Just, just leave it alone for a while. You know, maybe once, once a week. Uh, do, you know, do you know what it feels like to have high blood pressure, you know, if you don't take your medication? Uh, mm, no, not okay. well. Sometimes I'm, I may have had a headache in the past. Um, yeah, they started me out on the metropolol, and then they um, added the diazide. And then I've been on it for, like I said, 20 years. And mm-hmm. I've never had, they never increased it, never had a change in it or anything. And so then I, you know, told her I had done the cleanse. And so she said, well, you can, um, try to try not taking the medicine and checking it daily and things of that nature and so I did and like I said there was no change and then I spoke to Sharon again and so she had told me about some herbal supplements and so I went and got them and I'm taking them every day according to the directions on the label and it's still no change Okay, we'll give it time. And one um, thing I'm going to add too, though, is check your device too. I, my son had an issue. He called me, it was having an anxiety. He hadn't had anxiety for a long time, but he checked his pressure and it was elevated. So he was thinking something was wrong and his machine was defective. He had to get a different machine for his specific body. And so once he had it tested right, his blood pressure was normal. So check your machine. And then also too, I know you're rebounding, but I would just advised to get at least 30 minutes of workout a day. A lot of times we work out, but it, make sure it's at least a 30 minute good workout, not just a couple of minutes, just to um, get a little bit more aggressive. The only concern I have is in our community, I know blood pressure is the silent killer, you know, and some of us have what we call resistant pressure, which means we can be under several medications and it doesn't come down. The fact that it came down under medication, like Dr. Prince said, I think it's more of a dependency. You were on it for 20 years, your body was used to those high doses, and now you're trying to treat it naturally, and it's just resisting the natural treatment um, as it relates to bringing it down to normal level. So yeah, maybe not checking it every day. I think that's great. But also too, again, those green vegetables. I know I can be guilty of it sometimes. I have to consciously make myself make sure I'm getting enough green vegetables every day. Even the juicing. I'm in the habit now after the cleanse doing juicing in the morning as a habit even post during my post regimen. So we can never and journal what you're doing because a lot of times I'll talk to people and we think we're doing everything right but if you journal it and maybe then you present it to Aaron or Dr. Prince mm-hmm. yeah. it better because usually we can pinpoint this might be the issue. Maybe that day you ate out. You know, a lot of times we eat vegan processed food at restaurants and we don't know the amount of sodium in there because they don't disclose that. So um, just get very vigilant. Um, Take the stress off of yourself. I think your stress level of seeing that number every day is probably also elevating it. Right. I I was going to ask her that uh, outside of just, you know, worrying about that because worry can, because you are, you're triggering your fight or flight response. Well, one of the clinical signs in fight or flight is, is an increase in blood pressure. Um, you may not be able to feel your heart rate increase. A lot of times we don't. That's why we don't know if we're under stress. Nobody's going to stop while they're under stress and check their blood pressure. Nobody's going to check their pulse. We're not, we're not into our clinical signs when we're experiencing something. And it's usually not until afterwards that we realize, okay, why wow, my blood pressure is not going down. 
Well, what happens is when you do something on a chronic basis, you condition your blood pressure to be at a certain place. Remember, you've been used to taking a pill that manipulated your blood pressure down. So your blood pressure was never low. It was only ever manipulated. And so okay. now that so now that it's not manipulated anymore, now you're seeing your blood pressure as it is. So embrace the fact that now you can look at your blood pressure as it is without the mask over it because of the, the pills that you had to take before and just let your body heal and stop and don't let nobody stress you out. OK, right. And the last <laughs> question I have is you never been diagnosed with sleep apnea. Have you been tested for sleep apnea? Because I notice a lot of people that deal with pressure also snore very heavily. And they mm-hmm. don't know they have sleep apnea and right. their body is technically losing oxygen all night long. And mm-hmm. they're, you know, and so until that's treated, sometimes it's also hard to um, get it under control. So have you ever, ever had sleep apnea or have you ever been tested for it? I've never been tested for it, but I usually sleep through the night. Okay. You so you got pretty good. No. Good, good. That's good. And then, so then you're, you're okay. So the only other thing you want to consider is, uh, have you ever had blood sugar disorders or, or issues with diabetes? No, not at all. Is it in the family at all? I think my father had it. Okay. But my mother doesn't have it. Okay, cool. So just, just keep an eye out for... Do you drink alcohol? Not at all. Okay. Good. You're living a good life, girl. So we got to get that friend together. Don't worry about right. it. Right. So, right. So you, you're really worrying about something that you don't even really need to worry about. Um, right now. Uh, so just let it be, uh, continue what you're doing, uh, but, but keep an eye on, on, on your blood sugar. The next time you get labs uh, at the hospital, you know, just tell them to check your A1C you know, okay. to, make sure that, to make sure that that's at a good place. Because sometimes if, if, you're, if you're starting to have issues with your sugar, that can also cause an elevation of, of uh, blood pressure, okay? Okay. Thank right. you. Thanks, Karen. And, and one last thing. I don't know. Uh, I got some distortion, so I don't know if you all mentioned um, your stress level, Karen. Mm-hmm. Pay attention to how you handle stress. Do you internalize it? Or, I mean, really, how do you deal with it? So you might want to consider some form of uh, meditation, like calm your calm your spirit and just kind of bring you back to center. Um, yeah. Yeah, I like that idea. I was I was thinking about meditation, but I you know I don't want to take you into that because I, I think that's something that I think Melissa used to do, where you know they, you guys did with morning meditation. What was that? We're gonna be doing a meditation session, Dr. Prince, at our legacy conference. So get ready. Okay. All right. Cause because that's that's the that's the quickest way to get your body in a calm state when you when you learn how to meditate. Because there may be some things unconsciously and subconsciously that's affecting you that you're not even aware of. So that that's a whole nother thing going on right there. I think this is good. And I think the important takeaway too, guys, is she's being very proactive in measuring her blood pressure. So many people aren't. You're not paying attention. The silent killer is when our blood pressure stays high for long periods of time, and then it damages our kidneys. And that also, right. why you saying diabetes, make sure you don't have blood pressure. It's all of it. Exactly. Disease. So I think exactly. this is a great education piece. A lot of people got some beneficial information. So we can oh, man, the person get a degree on this uh, call. <laughs> um, but but Melissa, what, last, what was that? One last. Well, well, this is Can for I you. say one last thing? To, this is for you. To, yeah, to this who? is for, for you. Because okay. we, we were trying to okay. when we were trying to get to you before, it had to do with oh. with the pain from a okay. person who was dealing with gastrointestinal. Right. right. They had they a gallbladder, gallbladder move, but they right. and so I was telling them how sometimes when you have pain in one area, it may be something coming from another part of your body. And so I wanted you to kind of chime in on how you guys deal with manipulation of nerve pain and and how to decipher if the pain is from here based upon if it's radiating or if it's diffused or and where it can possibly be coming from, especially if it's gastrointestinal. Did I stump you? You still there? <laughs> she broke, she like, okay, <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so in terms of uh, manipulation and especially nephropathy, 
um, we actually um, uh, look at the the spine and the abnormal stress that is being exerted at any level of the spine because um, everything emanates from the spine. All mm -hmm. nerve uh, impulses are come from the spine. And so right. if your body is out of alignment, if you have abnormal stress in any area of your spine, it can literally cause dysfunction in the, <clears throat> excuse me, in the systems and organs that that particular nerve or those nerve groups of nerves innervate. So mm. that's one way to um, something to consider. To consider, yeah. Um, and then the other thing is um, I utilize a, a, another form of of, uh, of testing to inquire of the body. Hey, what's going on here? You know, and to ask those questions of the body, and that, that can lead you to some of the uh, the causality. Right. Uh, various problems because everything that is every symptom that appears to be physical does not necessarily mean that there is a physical cause it could actually be something mental and or emotional right right so and that's so that is one of the reasons you look at the 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 client as a as a complete or a whole entity because you Everything, everything affects everything else. Mm -hmm. Could it? Could yeah. it also raise your blood pressure if your if your spine? Most so, definitely. Oh so yeah. That's, so that's if another thing we want to say for Karen. You know, maybe you know, to check and see if you if you're aligned properly. Because I, when I did that thing at Wakanda where he adjusted me, I didn't even know I needed adjusting. Exactly. And and I went on to run a, a better race because I got adjusted. But I would have went to the race. And I'm, I don't know how I would have done had I not gotten adjusted. I didn't know I needed adjusted. So sometimes we need to kind of check in and just check and see where is our spine at, because that could go. That there are there are let's let's say there are three three major ways that you get sick. One is physical, one is chemical, and one is stress. So if if it's not the stress, if it's not the chemical, then it could be physical. So, but yeah, say what you had wanted to say, uh, Dr. Betty, and we okay. So the other thing that I wanted to go back to was something that was said um, in relate. Oh, I know we were talking about uh, uh, symptoms and dysfunctions that come up during the cleanse, and somebody mentioned urinary tract infection. I just want to remind everybody that we, when, when I say we, I mean we in general are not diagnosticians. Mm -hmm. We are not medical doctors and therefore we do not, do not make those kinds of statements. We can say, you know, you're having a difficult, some difficulty with your urination, or some symptoms related to your urination or mm -hmm. those kinds of things, but never, ever, ever make a diagnosis like that. Even though the even though you had UTIs in the past and you know ex exactly what the symptoms are, don't uh, don't do it because you're practicing medicine without a license. That's number one, and number two, never, ever, ever. Um, <laughs> really, it's prescribing uh, even supplements. What I even say to people is, if it were me, this is what I would do. I would go and get UTI, Vibrance, UT Vibrance, or whatever, or I have in the past experienced that kind of thing, and this is what I did. You might want to try something like that. But please, do not prescribe do not diagnose because you'll cause problems for yourself and for Wakana. Exactly. So right. if coaches out there, if you do have that situation, don't take it on yourself. Uh, contact me so we can resolve it. Uh, 
in a very official and legal manner, okay? Thank you, Dr. Betty. Thank you, Ms. Betty, Dr. Betty. Thank you. I think you might have got through all the questions. Let me, let me make sure. Let's see. We might get off early tonight, Dr. Betty. <laughs> this is early. One more thing. This is early. We're normally here tonight. One more thing. Karen, uh, you might also want to try hibiscus tea. Hibiscus will knock a blood pressure down quickly. And so just having a cup of hibiscus tea, maybe even twice a day, might benefit you. It also has diuretic um, properties where it'll help to pull the water out of your system. You'll find yourself urinating more. Um, and it just kind of calms things down. So you can that, get that. That is, your, that is your recommendation based on what you have experienced. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I'm, I, I, I see. I see you, Phyllis. I see you. Hey, I I'm, see, a I'm good watching. Student. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. And others, right, Phyllis? Yeah. Right. That's right. And yeah, that. And, yeah, that's it's definitely something mm -hmm. we've experienced and seen the, the the miraculous effects personally my son included in fact the day his blood pressure he thought was elevated it was slightly elevated not what he thought mm -hmm. but after he took his impranium he called me back he says mom he says here's what it's reading now he says does cbd help with pressure i'm like hey you, you be your own testimony mm -hmm. don't ask me right right no and then it does because one thing that it does it, it helps to activate the parasympathetic response in the body you know, and when you activate that parasympathetic response, one of the things is a decrease in blood pressure, a decrease in heart rate. It brings you into a calm, relaxed state, but it also re-engages your immune system. It also re-engages your digestive system. See, when you got that high blood pressure like that, Karen, and you're, and you're in that fight or flight, you're hurting yourself, you're hurting your immune system as well as your digestive system. So that's why you wanna, in no situation, or circumstance is important. What's important is how you respond to it. So change your response to the thing that you think may be creating some type of anxiety in you and just watch how things start to uh, turn around, okay? That is awesome. I just want to say that um, the, what I noticed doing the bio scans is energy. Uh, the energy and how people's energy affect me. And then taking it to another level. I mean, even everything that we're doing is all about frequency. It's leading up to that. Then the trip that we had on Friday and that you really are in control when you start using what you have within to bring down blood pressure. I mean, I'm, I'm making a statement about me. Mm -hmm. To just get calm within yourself. To know that mm -hmm. everything is within. And mm -hmm. that the more we're learning and helping others to understand what this body can do, what God just put here, and we just now getting to know, it's exciting to me where we're going to end up if we learn how to use our own frequency. And because of all of our collective frequency, how we can change the world. That's, that's a great point, Phyllis. In fact, that that does go a little bit deep. She went deep on you guys, but let me let me just kind of close it out with. It's with, like we going the, deep, right, Phyllis? <laughs> but wait, so so Phyllis is right. When you scan people, um, mm -hmm. now you can you can some people who are sensitive to energy can feel the energy through through the metal rock, and I can. You froze. I, th I think the frequency is too high right now. <laughs> the frequency. <laughs> wavelengths have just penetrated the system guys <laughs> but no this has been a ph phenomenal night um hopefully they come back within the next couple of minutes um if not we're going to conclude this and say good night to everyone i know i'm super excited about a lot happening we've been on this line since five o'clock so for three hours it's been I amazing believe it. we love you all <laughs> and we never get enough of this but guess what we're going to be back again next sunday so you're going to always have a chance to hear more um, let's just see if there's any more questions. Anything out there? Melissa, now? yes. This is oh, Magnolia. I just wanted you and Dr. Mooney to, I mean, uh, Minister Mooney, to respond to me. It doesn't have to be on this forum, okay. but it's the same question I asked before. I thought I made the corrections. 
Okay. And I put it in the uh, his in his chat and in your in yours. Gotcha. Now here's the and this is a good question. I think we actually addressed this to the team last week, guys. Some of you guys are doing bio scans, and sometimes you have people that are doing your bio scans for you. And that basically means now you're going to need to know how do you get that bio scan without actually having to send them, like you said, messages repeatedly, and you're not getting that bio scan from the person who did the scan. Um, we've created a new form, um, and Christian really did this as a way to solve the problem where you go online and you report it to customer service. It's like a tool so that we can know and let customer service troubleshoot. So, um, so yes, yeah, so I think that may be your issue, right, Magnolia? You're having trouble getting a, a copy of the scan that another coach did for one of your clients. And right, it was actually it. Minister Mooney and Dr. Prince and I are both waiting. Okay. Um, I have been out of town, but I don't think it's been responded to. Gotcha. I did go, I did follow your instructions last week. Okay. I have uh, paid for the scan online. Okay. Uh, and it's my sister. So, and Dr. Prince feels that it's kind of urgent for us to get it. Right. So, yeah. I'm back. I'm back. And I don't I'm know back, if but yeah. Mr. Mooney's on or not, but hey, we'll get that worked out for you, hon. Yeah, I did. Okay. I did. Yeah, I did call Mooney. I said, hey, and then he told me that, of course, the way y'all do it is you go through the system and then you add, you, add, you request it, pay it, and then it's sent out to you. So, what I want to do is I need to get that scan so I can get an idea of what's going on with your sister fully from head to toe and inside right. to out to the skin. Yeah, uh, so I think I've done, done everything that I'm supposed to do, so. No, no, you did everything. So okay. let's let's follow up on it this week, okay? All right, thanks. Before we go, for the people that are in Chicago next Sunday, we are having a, what kind of pick, well, a picnic, be, um, sponsored by the Crown Jewels, a group in Chicago. We want you to be able to bring your family out, your um, prospects, people that you want to know about. Wakana, and I am not the best person to share, but if Mooney is there or if Sylvia or our own CEO, but I think if Sylvia or if Mooney are on and could unmute and just tell the people here in Chicago um, about that phenomenal picnic that's going to happen next week i would greatly appreciate it i see sylvia's on let's get sylvia to come up guys so she can give you the times the details let um, me come up. i don't know if beverly's on she's our event chair right so, so let me uh, uh, hi, i'm here but i gotta pull up the, one moment okay so we got you uh -huh, i'm here just one second i gotta Pull it up. I'm sorry. I should have gave you a heads up, but I was just, when she said we'll be here next Sunday, I'm like, wait a minute. We're going to be at the park and still be doing the we'll flat belly. Flat belly. <laughs> so, flat belly. <laughs> Most of our people are not in Chicago. <laughs> right. Okay, so yeah, it's done by the Crown Jewel Committee. Um, it's August the 28th from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. Central Time. And it is at <clears throat> let's see. It's at 21801 Torrance Avenue, and that's in Sock Trail, Illinois. Let me turn this TV off. Uh, sorry about that. Okay, it's in Sock Trail, Illinois. Were you able to hear me before? Yeah, yeah. we heard you. Okay. And we'll announce it again uh, uh, all during the week on the morning calls, but just letting you know the people in Chicago, Dr. Prince, Sharon, Michael, please join us. It's going to be a really nice event. They've gone all out to make sure it is very nice. And you also, what do they need to bring if they're coming, Sylvia? Um, you need to bring your own sides. Like, we're going to provide, like, hamburgers and hot dogs. But any vegan other style. Food, vegan, guys. So vegan. It's vegan. Thing. Hamburger and hot dogs, they're vegan. Um, but if you want to bring your own food, um, you would need to bring your own, uh, you know, like your sides or or if you wanted some other type of meat. Um, let's see, we are, we're also going to provide, as a committee, we're going to provide desserts and beverages. Bring your chairs for your sitting area. Some uh, grounds I hear are absolutely gorgeous. So. so no grills or tents, though. You can't bring those. No grills or tents. They're going to have hula hooping, line dancing, uh, okay. I heard somebody say softball. I'm going to be playing some softball, y'all. <laughs> <I think. laughs> uh, business networking and family fun. So that's all the things. Yeah. 
Okay, I missed I missed all of that because uh, the powers that yeah they didn't want they didn't want y'all to hear what I had to say. So what what is this event? It's we're having way. a picnic next week and we're going to make sure you get all of it because we would love for you all we'll be broadcasting from there so hey, okay all you right and Darren and, I'm and, down. and uh michael and you know let's have some fun you know this isn't just about work we love to mm -hmm. have fun <laughs> right it's our crown jewel committee so it's an independent committee it's not sponsored by wakana but we are honored to um, be able to help support them and their phenomenal vision to bring everybody together. I know De Beverly Blair, she's our um, sh event chair. So I know if you come, Eric, they will be so thrilled. So you and okay. Sharon have an invitation. Let's, let's get you guys out there. And, and uh, I might as well, uh, you know, just make a, an announcement about the uh, holistic health fair as well, which will be, you know, uh, September 4th. That'll be from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, at the House of Jacob. Uh, speakers will be myself, A.C. Green, 6.3. We'll be talking and giving his testimony of how he, he uh, got through COVID and never got touched when it, when it comes to illness or sickness because of his immunity. Uh, Melissa Boston will be uh, sitting down and talking. Uh, Karen Calabrese will be also talking. And uh, young lady by the name of Medina will be speaking as well. Uh, so these are, so between Sh Melissa, Karen, AC, and me, those, that's four powerful people that have a, a lot of influence and a lot of strong following in this city that's going to give their perspective on building natural immunity um, instead of, you know, dealing with the synthetic. Immunity. So that'll be um, September 4th. And then also all the coaches, you know, let us know. I think we're supposed to talk, what, Thursday, Melissa, with the coaches? Um, because it's gonna be an opportunity for you guys to come and set up and scan and probably get new clients because this is this these people don't know much about Wakana, but this is a powerful church because these are the black Jews, the black Hebrew Israelites, which is a which is a church that spans the whole country as well as the, the world. So the fact that we're able to get in and get get connected with these people um, is gonna be huge because we need that we do need that spiritual support from the churches not just the you know just the sole christian churches but also the, the, the black jews and then which are connected to white jews so we just need to keep going to these different arenas bringing this health message so that everybody can start and let it grow um, so the coaches will be able to scan we're looking at over 250 plus people being there uh, so we want to talk about that on thursday uh, the people who want to be there the people who want to scan and then how we're going to go about just working with all the people that are going to be coming in that are new, okay? Exciting. And also, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. To, don't let me forget. Vegan World Cafe will be catering the food, so it's going to be vegan food there. Do you have an address for the House of Jacob? Yes, uh, we're, we're going to put the flyer out. But the House of Jacob is actually 2508 East 75th Street. 2508 East 75th Street. And then, and you gotta get, you gotta understand, I, I started, when I, when I started going to this particular building, it was a different congregation in there that this, the, the congregation there now came from the west side. So, but the congregation that used to be in there back 20 years ago, when I started going to that church and studying the Bible, um, that annex was actually a meat house. And the spiritual, the, 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 the interesting part about it is that once I joined that church, within about a year, that meat house shut down. And that's how, that's how I knew that we was about to get into a revolution of moving from animal-based protein to plant-based, because this whole meat house shut down. Uh, and I, you would think that, hey, it was going to shut down anyway, but it wasn't. Your energy, your spirit changes things. That's what you got to understand. And that's what Phyllis was talking about is that your energy changes your environment. Not only does it change your environment, but it changes the people around your environment. So when you sit down to that consultation, you're changing that person's life just by being present with that person, because now they're dialing into a higher frequency that they didn't have before. They're dialing into a whole new reality. So you have to respect your energy, respect your temple, because you're resonating a powerful frequency that's commanding the creation and the experience of the planet. So we're the ones that's bringing forth a whole new reality to the world. 
So keep doing what you're doing. And may the Lord God bless you and keep you, cause his light to shine upon you, be gracious to you, show you guys favor, and grant you everlasting peace and success through the cleansing and detoxification process. Amen. 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 Thank you guys. Great questions tonight. Thank you guys. It's always amazing to have your support. Thank you, Sharon, Dr. Betty. Thank you. Thank you, you Dr. Betty. Sure. Dr. Betty's our frequency. Gigi, thank you, Gigi. <laughs> cool back for that cool background. You're welcome. <laughs> Where's Gigi at? Where's Gigi at? That, that's where I want to be. We love it. We love it. <laughs> We're there with you, dear. We are with you. <laughs> yeah. All right, you guys. Thank you all for an Thank you, everyone. Call. Good night. Thank you, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. 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 Good night.